Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today and we are here for round 3 of the season for the Chinese Grand Prix. If you guys missed rounds 1 or 2, they'll be linked down below in a full playlist link along with the last episode linked in the top right hand corner of the screen for the Bahrain Grand Prix. And for this one, we are here at the Chinese Grand Prix at Shanghai. And for this one guys, straight away, I wasn't able to keep it on 110% AI unfortunately. I'll show you guys in a moment, but uh, in terms of this weekend, We've got rain in the race expected, which could be a pretty interesting wild card and could definitely for, for a big spanner in the works because it could really, you know, make it quite interesting. It can actually give us a chance around here to score some big points. In terms of R&D, you can see on the screen, no one really bringing any major upgrades and uh, we personally don't have any upgrades either. So we're trying to save up a few points as uh, so we now jump into practice here. And we're going to see how things get on as we move into the Friday practice session. And straight away, this is when I realized 110 was impossible because I started up with 108 in practice and after all the race runs and quality sim runs, I was still way off Kibitz's pace. So I knew straight away that um, it, there was no chance of it being 110. If anything, I would be lucky to actually maintain 108 because the AI seems to be pretty quick around here and Kibitz is a quite you know pretty damn quick around here as well so it's going to be a big big challenge so yeah guys for this weekend we are running 108 percent ai and in terms of the qualifying session it's going to be a drier session which was good but as you guys saw before the race is going to be wet so we're going to take that into account when it comes towards the car setup and uh, putting a little bit more aerodynamic you know weight onto the car than i normally would because uh, i want to be more competitive in the race in qualifying i normally take a, a risk and run a little bit less front wing so uh, we are going to run a bit less front error right now but we'll probably put that back on for the race because obviously you can adjust the front wing even with part from a rules on you can change your front wing value so uh yeah that's the plan going forward we're now going to move into qualifying though in this session we're going to see how we get on as we now move into q1 and we're going to go for two runs in the session as always and hopefully we get through to q2 because we didn't achieve it in the last race in the last race we got knocked down q1 after getting q3 in australia i'd like to get back there once again but i think this is going to be a big struggle because uh if we struggled in the last race and uh you know we, we had better pace there i think we're going to struggle here as well so Straight away in Q1, we hit the racetrack and our first one was actually going okay, but then I made a mistake into the kind of left right chicane at the start of sector three and I got very loose on the back end. So I had to uh, catch the car. I still pushed on and went on to finish the lap because I wanted to get a, a respectable and, uh, you know, a delta time of sort. So I know what I'm aiming for on my final run. And we crossed the line that we only remain in 20th place and don't get off the bottom of the table. So we've got it all to do on our final run here. And we need to find about nine tenths of a second on this lap to get through into Q2. So let's see how we get on. We've actually uh, taken off a bit more front wing for this run as well. So here we go, straight away, turn one, throwing the car in. I probably turn a little bit early there. You want to kind of turn it at the last minute and really focus on your mid to late, late apex at, at the end of the corner. But uh, we got away with it. We actually had a pretty smooth run as we now get on the power out of turn three. And so far, we've pretty much matched our previous sector one in identical form as we now look for the 100 meter board break just after it down to second gear for the hairpin use first to pick up some extra rotation then smoothly on the power once again on the exit as we now go through these two fast left right combos three of the two best corners on the track for me i really enjoy these but uh, having taken off a bit more front wing there was a little bit more understeer through here so i had to really play around with the gears to maximize the cornering and now thrown into these two left handers which are probably my two least favorite corners on the track because it's so hard to get the power down through there and uh, sector two draws to a close 1.2 down here currently on Valtteri Bottas as we throw the car into the place we made the mistake last time this time no dramas as we feed the car through getting onto the power now and there were six and a half tenths up here so far as we go onto the back straight losing a little bit of time there on the exit through the banking and then we're now six tenths up on our previous best so we need to try and find a little bit more lap time if possible in this final part of the lap now as we go towards the hairpin looking at the 100 meter board once again as your braking reference and then down to first gear to pick up your apex on the power smoothly once again trying to get no wheel spin here and now one more corner to go and it's all or nothing you just got to throw the car in to really maximize the lap time on the power as soon as possible overtake ERS to the line and we do improve by seven tens but ultimately it's not going to be enough and we are going to only qualify in 18th place having said that it was a good lap because Going into that final run, even though I made a mistake before, I was 9 tenths off Robert Kubica. So I did a good job and I'm very happy that I got within a tenth of a second of my teammate who's been quicker than me all weekend. So overall, we get knocked out and we do get out qualified by Robert. Having said that, it was uh, much closer than I expected and I think Q2 was never possible. But I definitely think I could have beaten Kubica maybe with a slightly better lap. Having said that, a decent quality, but we're now going to move into the race for round three of the season here at Shanghai for the Chinese Grand Prix. Let's get to work. 
It's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. The ever-tightening turns one and two will prove tricky in the slippery conditions here at Shanghai, and anyone that slides wide will lose a lot of time getting back on track. Turn 14 should still be the best place for overtaking, but we'll have to see some improvement in the weather before the drivers can take advantage of that DRS assistance. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today? And how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Gasly, Max Verstappen and Vettel, Hülkenberg, Norris, Raikkonen and Alexander Albon, Perez, Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo and Kvyat, Magnussen. Kubica, Martinez and Lance Stroll, Giovinazzi and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. OK, so here we are then on the grid for the Chinese Grand Prix, starting from 17th place. Penalties have pushed us forward a little bit on the grid and we've got Kubica there to our right-hand side. So we're going to see how we get on. The intermediate conditions could be a blessing in disguise. And it's my first race since the uh, patch that rebalanced the AI's pace in the wet. But I believe, and I, I want to think that was just for the full wet conditions, not for the light rain conditions. If they have got slower in the light rain, then I might have a chance of actually going forward here and really progressing. But I think as it stands, it's going to be a very close race. Very, very tricky race. Strategy is going to be key. And I think it will go on to dries before the end of the race. So it's all going to be about timing and making sure that call to the dry tire is perfect in terms of fuel we've actually reduced the amount of fuel in the car and we've only got 0.2 extra very little extra fuel just enough for the start but i want to run at a minimum for this early part of the race on the inters to really have a light car and be able to push and again a few places also like i said before we had a different setup on i took some front wing out for qualifying but we're going to put it back on here for the race for these conditions so yeah there we go front wing on and now we're going to get ready for the race here for round three of the season for the chinese grand prix and hopefully we can pull this out the bag and dare I say score a point let's jump into it right here we go then let's try and get a good start here as the five red lights come on here at Shanghai lights out and away we go slowly up to speed as Kibitza gets a good start in the other Williams towards turn one we go on the outside here it's 3-1 in front of us we are going to be able to get down to the inside line and I'm going to try and follow Kibitza through here as he makes progress. That Toroso turning in on us there on the left-hand side. Three wide in front, a racing point, Alfa Romeo and Williams. On the outside, we're going to go easy on the power. Kibitza there checking up mid-corner. Still no progress as we go down towards the next hairpin. I want to try and go down the inside here, three wide. With my teammate and the Toroso, we brush that racing point and the braking there. On the power though, we get good exit and a good traction. I should have said that the other way around. Now, good exit and good traction, that's more like it. And we're up to P15, so making up two places. Kibitza following me through there, getting past the Toro also. So we're up to 15th and 16th respectively. So it's a good start for the pair of us. Already the car feels very agile and uh, capable in these conditions. But I mean, it's early days, we're, we're stuck in traffic, so I will judge it in a few laps time. As we're just gonna tweak the differential there. Open up a little bit for these conditions. But for now, it's all about just settling into the race trying to feel comfortable in the conditions and then start to really push a little bit and uh, pick up some lap time but for now there's a good start and the Williams feels a lot more racy in these conditions than it has ever done due to the upgrade so I'm liking this so far as we go into the back straight looks like a straight line speed's pretty okay as well which is good to see so overall looks like we've got a decent package I'm coming from very far back there I almost had to go at Perez we are going to try and sniff around the outside and oh my god, are we going to put it off? Perez is giving me a squeeze that he's giving me no room at all. Side by side with the racing point, sorry, Magnussen this entire time by saying Perez. But down the inside we go. And we take the position, there we go. And Kibitza gets past as well for good measure. 
and that's what Magnuson gets for giving me the squeeze. So, completely unexpected, but we are up to P14. So there you go. Good opening lap. And again, we've put ourselves into contention to potentially score some points because uh, we've had such a good start. We've got a Torosso in front of us now, I can see in P10. So he might hold some people up. Alfa Romero in front of us as well, Dan Danny Ricardo. So uh, it's looking good so far. Let's get ahead down and get after these guys. I think we can definitely score points. The Williams feels fantastic already. Looks like I'm pretty good on the brakes into the hairpin, I can't lie. I know the AI are kind of breaking earlier because they're all breaking in front, but we seem to be quite able and capable to break very late. To the final corner, if I can just get a good exit here. I've, bit, I've gone a little bit deeper to the corner, so unfortunately I'm not close enough to Ricardo, I don't think. Personal best, 48 1. No DRS now because, of course, we're in wet conditions, but I'm starting to put the pressure on the Alpha, and the Alpha is a worse car than this one, so. Okay, so 10 more minutes of rain. We're uh, having a little look at Ricardo there through turn two. This normally would be DRS enabled this lap, but of course, you know, due to the conditions, there is no DRS. That Ferrari in front, not going particularly fast, and uh, dare I say, holding this little train up. I want to try and make some moves now, though, because we seem to have some good pace. This Williams is working in these conditions, which I like. Seems to be some good grip out on the track at the moment, and I feel racy. I fancy my chances. I want to try and get past this Alfa Romeo, which we know is a slower car than ours, so I want to try and dispatch him as soon as possible, as we run a bit deep there into that left hand up. But let's try and get past Danny Rick if we can. We're pretty close here. It's a good exit from us. Struggling to get the power down completely, but we are close to Ricardo. Ricardo doesn't have much of a toe from in front, but there is no DRS, so we've got to do it all with just raw straight on speed. That Ferrari in front is causing a bit of a train effect, and we are gaining on Ricardo here. We are going to go down the inside of the hairpin. A very, very comfortable move on the brakes. We're going to give Ricardo the squeeze on the exit. I like Kevin Magnussen. So we're up to 13th place now, making good progress. Carlos signs up next. The longer that Ferrari in front has issues, the better for our race because we can get past these guys. That Torosso as well is uh, starting to struggle with the pace, and I think he's becoming a bit of a, a cork in the bottle. So let's get after these guys and make some progress. I think I can definitely see myself in the points here today so far after such a good start to this race. So close to science here. I've actually got the one on him. We're going to go down the inside, make the move. I've run a bit deep though, so signs back underneath on the switchback. Fair play. I've got some great traction though through there, so we've definitely got pace at the moment. Car's working well, but then again, maybe it's not the true the AI's true pace because they're stuck behind the Ferrari, so they can't really you know run at full pace. But I, I do think we have got the pace anyway. Looking at how far the leaders have gotten away so far. I think this is genuine, and I think we can actually compete. Let's try and get a good run through here. I'm struggling to get the key exit on the AI through here. This is where the AI are pretty good with their traction control, and we can't quite match them, unfortunately, for exit. As we pick up a track extension warning there, trying to get the power down a little bit too much. I think we're too far back from signs, unfortunately, but there is going to be a move just in front as uh, the racing point is going to go down the inside of the Torosso. Signs is taking a very compromised line here, so we're going to take a wide entry switch back underneath try and get the power down if we can that's good not ideal but good around the outside of the final corner on the McLaren just about enough room but signs is hanging in there drag race down towards turn one looks like the signs is just going to get that so I'm going to back out for now I'm going to try and slip down the inside of uh, turn two not quite being on the inside of turn one is always risky because the AI are turning on you very aggressively and you can easily just lose your entire front wing or get spun out. So it's a it's a, not a very sensible place to overtake realistically. So we'll have to do it elsewhere. I'm pretty good here. If I can get the exit out of turn three, I could definitely have a run into five. But here's where we passed him last lap. I think we're still on the right tyres for the time being. Got nice and close again there, but this time not the same amount of traction. I need to get past these three cars because there's a bit of a separation starting to occur now in front of the Toro Rosso. So I want to try and get through. Good exit from us there this time. We are gaining on the McLaren a little bit. I fancy my chances here. We're close enough. I want to switch to the outside again. Like I did with Magnussen, but not quite enough space to really maneuver. Good traction again though. We're going to get to the inside. Off the McLaren into the final corner. I've got to take the bollard with me because uh, I don't have much room. 
There's Sons on the outside. Rolls reverse from last lap, and look at the speed we've got. Here we go, around the outside. We take it, a little bit wide, but we are going to go for it. Sons back down the inside. We're going to go up our side here all the way through. I've got the inside though for the next one, and that should do it. There we go, job done. Right now we've got to try and get past Sergio Perez in the racing point. And then I believe it's Danny Kvyat in the Toro also. Let's try and make this happen. Good pace. Look at that, half second improvement already just by running in clean net. We've got much better pace than the AI. So I want to try and use it while these conditions are still, you know, pretty much intermediate. Because it's going to start drying out soon. So I want to make the most of this. Getting very close to the racing point. I want to try something here. See if I can maybe get a better exit. Take a wider line through two. And carry the speed out of three. The only problem is that racing point is bloody quick on the straight, but we are closer than we have been. That's a slower car, I'm definitely sending one down the inside there, but the racing point just has a lot of straight line speed. Okay, the boots are looking too warm at this point. We should have plenty of life left in them. Let's make sure we keep managing them properly. Putting serious pressure on Sergio Perez. This time it is Sergio Perez in front of us in the racing point. This is where I struggle with these two corners here. I hate these so much, both in the dry and the wet. You see how much I lose. I get no traction compared to the AI. Perez going for the move on Kofia. Around the outside of the hairpin. We're going to set up the switch back. Looks like Perez could be going through here on the Torosso. To the final corner. The Torosso slow. We're going to get the power down and get the exit. This time we are going to go down the inside. I've got the run. I've got the momentum. Down the inside. Perez on the switch back though. He's well ahead this time. I've got to try and hang it around the outside. We're going to carry the speed. At turn three now. And there we go. We've got through. Up to 10th place. And into the points. And it was actually Alex Albon in Toro. So it's not a coffee app. So my bad. I'm having a bit of a crofty one here today. Because the best 46.6. Just a small improvement. But still better pace. Looks like, I believe the Ferrari Sebastian Vettel, I think, I can see a white helmet from here. As the Renault's made the move, and now the Haas of Norris is stacking up behind to make an overtake. Let's try and get in on the action. Oh, that's a good run there. We are going to find some good traction, but not quite close enough to get the run on Lando. But the pressure begins to mount already here. I think we've got pace, actually, to keep up with the leaders. I'm looking at how far ahead the leaders are. And they're on the next straight, not that far ahead after nine laps. I think I could match their pace, to be honest. Maybe run a bit quicker than them. It wouldn't be about much, but I can definitely do best of the rest, that's for certain. I've got that level of pace in these intermediate conditions. Let's try and get the run through here. Maybe get a couple of cars, that'd be fantastic if I could. Couldn't quite get the traction down, but we've got the straight line speed here on Norris. We're going to pull to the right hand side. That Ferrari in front doing pretty good for straight line speed. Going to break early as a precaution to not hit Sebastian Vettel. But late enough that Norris can't go around the outside. As Verstappen sets the first half of the race. I think I can match that. I'm not that far off. Final corner. Average traction, but we are close to Sebastian. We're gaining on the Ferrari here quite a lot actually. Seb doesn't defend. I'm going to sit back for now. I'm going to try and go for the switchback on him. Into turn two. That Ferrari's got wing damage. That's why it's going so slow. Sebastian trying to squeeze me there. But no way through as we get up to eighth place now. So making fantastic progress here. Only Hulkenberg and the McLaren of Raikkonen, I believe, remain. So let's get after him. Good luck from us. 47-1. Big improvement there. We're only about half a second off of Stappen, who's just at the purple lap. So we're matching the Red Bull's pace in many ways here. And we're matching the Ferrari, at least, of Charles Leclerc. But we're definitely quicker than Hulkenberg and Raikkonen, which is good. Starting to put the pressure on the German here. Good exit there. We've got the run on the Renault, but not enough straight for us to get close. I think the rain's just stopped falling now. Yeah, the rain stopped, literally just stopped dropping. So... We're just running on a dry track, so I 
think we're going to be on them dry tyres soon. China, I believe, is a track that's notoriously quite slow to dry up. So we will be on these inters for a little while. And dare I say, if we could avoid pitting for a fresh set and stay on these used ones, that could really bring us into this race. So let's see how we get on. But for now, it's looking good. And I think I've got, I'm going to have a chance of getting past Hulkenberg here. So let's get a good exit through the banking. Yeah, the rain's definitely eased off as we've got the one on Hulkenberg here. We're going to go down the inside. Running in a bit hot on the brakes, so we're going to have to pull up. Got that one a bit wrong. Hulkenberg on the switchback. Side by side, but we are going to get the traction. I know we are. I'm supreme on traction around here. Hulkenberg on the outside. I'm on the inside. He's still hanging in there, but he's going to be on the outside curb, which is not where you want to be. And we get past him. Up to seventh place. Hulkenberg, though, following me with the slipstream. We're going to run lead mix here to save a bit of fuel. Let's try and stay in front now and uh, get after Kimi as uh, so the track is now starting to really dry out. Oh, that's a big lock up. I was pushing a bit hard there. Nearly three tenths up on my personal best. Well, that's a big mistake to make and Hulkenberg's right back on the back of me now. Oh, struggling. Got to be careful. Here comes Nico. We're going to cover the inside, show him the long way around. Look at that, look at the Williams go, the drag reduction upgrades. It's becoming very easy to lock up now. I've got the medium tire selected. We might have to go into the hard, we'll see. Done it again. Struggling for grip now. Track's getting very delicate. I might check my tire wave real quick just to see where it's at because I am struggling. 42 on the left rear. I'm coming over to the right hand side. One to defend and two to get some water on my tyres to cool them off. Hulkenberg isn't pushing that much. His engine mode isn't that high. So we're able to stay in front. But Raikkonen has got good pace here. He's definitely holding on to that sixth place quite easily in the McLaren. I think I could have maybe put in that last lap. It's getting very close. Could be this lap. The thing is, there's still a bit of spray coming off the tyres. But the track does look dry. This is going to be such a big call. situation is an interesting one but I think the right call is to stick with what we've got right now a new strategy is available on the MFD copy that there it is DRS enabled I had a feeling that last time might have been the one still we're half a lap in so it won't be too bad but we are going to pit in this lap for the dry tires and I've managed to save some fuel Box this lap please and the ERS for the dry period because uh, this was our chance, the Inters, to make the progress. I think now we're just going to go backwards in the race. I don't think we'll have the pace to keep up, as you guys saw in quality. So it's important to keep a gap as we get sideways through the banking there. Struggling for grip now. A lot of cars are going to pit in here, so it's a good thing we've got the last pit box. Understood. Stopping this lap. Hulkenberg has the RS here, so we might have to be careful. We're going to defend the inside slightly. But we don't have the tyres to race each other at the minute, so we're going to comfortably stay in front. Let's just get into the pit lane and uh, let's not make any mistakes. As we go into the medium tyres, I'm going to try and see if I can get away with. Hopefully, I can get to the end on those. Actually, know what I'm going to make. Copy that. Hard for next box. Yeah, I've set the hard tyres. I made a last minute change. I'm going to play it safe. Yeah, hard tyres selected. Precautionary last minute change for the hard tyre. Robert is coming in for a stop. I don't trust the medium, so we're going to go for the hard tyre. Here we go. And you good stop. Go, go now. There we go, 1.8. Good stop from the boys. And away we go. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Getting a massive sideways moment there, straight out of the pit lane. Oh yeah, the track's definitely ready for dryers. Well, having said that, the track was a little bit light at the moment. 
Got to be careful, it was a bit slippery. We've extended the gap over Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg lost a lot of time in the pit lane. Seems like everyone's gone for medium. So again, I might have made the wrong call there, but I'm thinking about the long game. And you're going to put a lot of wear on the tyres at the moment with the slippery track, so it's probably safe to run the hards. You can definitely lean on these tyres a lot. You won't overheat with these either, so hopefully it's the right call in the long run. I think we should be okay. I'm going to use this outlap to save some fuel in the RS once again. Okay, the remaining cars pit in. I'm back up to 7th place now. Right then, let's see if we have pace in this tyre. I can always see we're losing a lot of time to Hulkenberg, but it is where it is. I'm taking the chance here, playing the long game, hoping those mediums go off at the end. Ooh, yellow flag. On the back straight, and it's the Renner of Hulkenberg just behind us who's dropped off the pace. Okay, the incident has been cleared. Let's get back up to racing speed. Hulkenberg out of the Chinese Grand Prix. First retirement. It's going to take some pressure off, but now Norris is going to have a free chance of coming after me. So, we've got to try and defend a little bit now. Norris will be in the back of me this lap. So, the pressure is building already. 1.7 is the gap. Okay, Norris one second behind. He's probably going to be within DRS now, so... It begins. It's a long way to go in this race. But like I said, I feel confident in the long run. This is going to be the better strategy. So let's just stick to our guns here and commit to our own race. Oh, poor run there. Morris on the back of me. We're going to have to cover the inside. He doesn't quite commit to a move, so he's going to sit back away for the RS probably. Sensible move from the youngster. Here we go then. The pressure begins. This is why I saved all my fuel in the RS. Towards the end of the intermediate stage, here comes Lando. To the inside he goes. It's going to be a good old fashioned drag race. Rich Energy has F1 versus Williams. I'm going to go later on the brakes than him. Right on the outside, using the trail braking. And look at that. We stay in front. Fantastic bit of defensive driving there. The confidence to push on these dry tyres. Is fantastic and I can break nice and light around this track. I feel confident everywhere. Has or oh, Lando, sorry, I was gonna say has there, but Lando coming at me again around the outside, but we're gonna just hold the inside line. He's going all the way around though. He's onto the marbles, and that's gonna give us the inside. Once again we stay in front, but this is gonna be a constant tug of war now, back and forth between the pair of us. Good exit for me there, but Lando straight on my gearbox once again. He's gonna go to the outside. A bit deep on the brakes on purpose to avoid the switch back. And there we go, pressure off for now. Oh, yellow flag again. Good exit out of the banking. The track is clear. Green flag. Looks like it's a racing point behind us as Lando once again lining up the move. There's a certain Sebastian Vettel as well recovering in the Ferrari now. Lando to the outside. He's going to try and do what I done last lap, but that's not going to happen, Sunshine. Very sorry about that one. We stay in front for at least another lap, I think, as we get a good run through the final corner. Sebastian Vettel is going to become the threat now very soon. All right, once again, onto the banking. Good exit. Lando's got the slipstream. I've got to be careful with my ERS because I'm using quite a lot and I'm pretty low. I think I can defend here without using ERS. Signs as well, getting very close in the McLaren behind us, looking for a move. Lando trying it around the outside once again here. But we're going to out-traction him and stand in front. Fantastic final corner there. Good bit of traction. We pretty much burned off our excess fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait too long to turn the engine down. I'll keep us in front for now. As the laps tick over slowly but surely. Got to make our car as wide as possible. Okay, Lando again very close. He's going for it again. We're going to cover the inside. Show him the long way round. Carlos Sanz picking up a toe from me here. Lando is very good on straight line speed this time. We have to match him on the brakes down the inside at the hairpin. It's aggressive. Very hot on the brakes. We get the, just about the car slowed down. But crucially, we stay in front once again. Running out of fuel in the RS to defend with now. I've got to be careful. Still lots of laps. I've got to try and manage it a little bit better somehow, even though I'm running none pretty much throughout the rest of the lap. A little bit of a front lock up there. That's not ideal. Can't be having that. The 
exit is so crucial here. So, so crucial. Lando's got the one very early on this time. But he's not as high in engine mode as before. He's not catching that much. Now he's starting again. Now we turn the engine up. We've got signs behind looking for a move as well. Got to defend from multiple cars. Lando around the outside again. He's managed to go for it, but we get the better traction. And once again, we're going to just stay in front, as I believe Sebastian Vettel's made the move on Carlos Sainz behind us. And he might be about to make the move on Lando Norris now. Yes, he is. Here he goes down the inside. A good chance for me to save fuel. And the RS into turns one and two. Vettel gets past the Haas. Sebastian feeling racy in the prancing horse, of course. But Lando still going side by side with him. We're going to pick up the exit, but both of these guys are all over my mirrors. I can see them battling away. We're going to have to take an early apex here because Sebastian Vettel is going to get the run. He's feeling very aggressive in that Ferrari. We're going to defend him around the outside there. And we're going to stay in front for now. I've got to try and save fuel in the RS throughout this middle sector because that's the only chance I'm going to get. But I think Sebastian Vettel, unfortunately, is going to be inevitable. We can't quite hold off a Ferrari, I don't think. We have five laps of fuel remaining. Yep, said does go for it. I didn't think he would, but he did. We're going to hold it around the outside. Of course, we're missing out on DRS amongst all of this, but that's fine. It's costing everybody time. I'm making everybody work their tyres harder. Here goes Sebastian. I'm going to keep it in hot lap mode for now. Looks like that Ferrari is good, but not that good in the straight. Maybe not running as high of an engine mode as possi he possibly could. Down the inside we go. We're going to try and hold on to this. Sebastian, very alongside there on the curb though. He doesn't get the traction. We're going to stay in front, but not for long. Sebastian down the inside of the final corner. I'm going to pick up the RS here, so I can maybe return the favour. I'm going to go to the right-hand side. Make it a fairly simple move. Down the inside of turn one. Don't overcommit, don't take too much speed, so that way we don't run wide and Sebastian can't undercut us. And job done. Good move, but one out of the woods. Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be a constant battle for position here. Sebastian Vettel now is going to get the exit once again. I'm going to show him to the outside. Because I know he's looking for that aggressive switch to the inside, but he's not going to get it. We stay in front. Good exit from us this time. Looks like Sebastian is actually quite far back. He's going to put us under some pressure at the end. But not enough. And then we're going to be able to comfortably defend this one. For a change. Big chunk of oversteer there. Sebastian around the outside. Going the long way around. There's three laps of fuel remaining. But we just get our car in front and stay in front really holding on to this. I was hoping for their mediums to start to fade, but they're not going away that much, to be honest. We'll see if it pays dividends at the end. Sebastian's just got so much pace, though. He's going to go down the inside. We're going to hold it around the outside, though, and once again stay in front. But it's all going to come down to this back straight. What a battle this is, though. The back straight here comes Sebastian. He's running a high engine mode this time. He's not messing around. This might be hard to stay in front of. Carlos Sainz behind is gaining and he's managed to get to the inside. I'm going to go very late on the brakes, try and go around the outside. I'm onto the marbles though and I've lost two places there at once. The marbles gave me massive understeer, absolutely chronic understeer. And unfortunately, we've lost the place to Carlos Sainz in the process. Unless we can get him back here. Is the turn one? No, I think it's gone. Unfortunately, we've lost the position there. Very good overtake from Signs. Very tactical. And our stern defence of P7 comes to an end. And we've still got Lando Norris for company here. This isn't going to end. A battle to the finish. Norris looking for the move down the inside. I can tell already. We're going to force him the long way around. But he doesn't get past. Big front right lockup. Norris is going to put me under some severe pressure here. I've, I've already dropped out of DRS from the car in front, so 
I don't have much DRS to, to play with, really. Here comes Norris. He's going to open up the DRS now. Side by side, down towards the hairpin. I've got marbles on my tyres again here. Play on the brake, trying to release the brake. Norris trying to avoid the marbles, which is what I didn't do. But we do get the traction. And we're going to just get in front again. And stay in front. There we go. Two laps to go. Managed to save a little bit of fuel. And a little bit of ERS this lap. And I'm actually keeping Norris at bay here. Everybody's queuing up in like a straight line trying to get past. There's no way through at the minute. I'm defending well. Norris onto the marbles. That's going to take the pressure off. As he's now going to by side with the Toro also here, which is good news for me. Albon trying to come back through. As we go into the last lap, this is good timing for us. Very good timing. I'm going to get a chance to save fuel in the RS. And look at the gap we have. Let's try and pull away if we can. There we have it then. So Verstappen wins at Shanghai. Albon's trying to make a last minute push to get after me, but I think I'm too far ahead. So uh, we should be okay. Last push now. Use up what we've got left of fuel in the RS. But Verstappen now wins, so finally Red Bull pick up a W this season. We're going to pick up P9 and score a couple of points. Same result as the last race, I believe. So overall, it's a good start of the season. And three out of three for points. Look at this massive trend behind us, which actually the Kibitz is actually inside of as well. So again, he finishes pretty close to me here, but we come out on top and score P9. And once again, it's good points. Get in. Good race. Thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a strong drive and a good finish. So another fantastic victory for Red Bull today. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. Right, so we're going to do some race recap here. And straight away, Verstappen picking up the win. That's massive for Red Bull. Massive for the championship. And he wins by two tenths of a second over Lewis Hamilton. Very, very close. But Verstappen actually picked up the fastest lap of the race as well. So he scores 26 points here today. Lewis Hamilton still a very strong second place with Charles Leclerc in third. Running off the podium for Ferrari. And two third places in a row now for him in the prancing horse. Valtteri Bottas P4. Missing out the podium with Pierre Gasly P5 in the Red Bull. And then Kimi Raikkonen best of the rest in P6. Sebastian Vettel with car issues and front wing damage. Finishing in seventh place ahead of Carlos Sainz. And we come home P9. And uh, Alexander Albon running out the point score was scoring the final point here today. We scored two World Championship points, which is good news. And then we've got Lando Norris in 11th, missing out on the points, along with Ricardo Stroll, Magnussen, Kibitza, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Kvyat, with Perez and Hulkenberg retiring from the Grand Prix. And overall, a very close race with everybody covered by one minute and uh, the top 17 covered by 55 seconds. But in terms of the standings after that race, we drop down to 7th place as Pierre Gasly overtakes us. But... We are still best of the rest, and the gap at the top comes down as Raikkonen, and uh, sorry, as, ha as Verstappen and Hamilton are covered by eight points. So those two, very close together there. And in terms of the constructors, we're still the fourth best team, but McLaren are very strong, and they are breathing down the neck. So uh, McLaren, I think it's only a matter of time before they overtake us for fourth place. Having said that. I'm happy with the progress and the car's looking good. Three points finishes out of three this season so far. And we're going to put some upgrades on right now in the laptop because we've got a nice amount of points to spend. So let's add on to the car and let's improve it as we go into the next couple of races. So let's jump into the laptop and improve this Williams car. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? It's safe to say you're smashing everyone's expectations, isn't it? Do you think your rival learned from his battle with you? Did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today? Great, 
Well, that's everything. Okay, so here we are then on the laptop and it's time for some upgrades and we're going to do some big ones here. So the chassis needs work because we are towards the bottom of the table. So because of the upgrades we did and making the upgrades more cheaper last season, we can afford to at least do minimum two major upgrades here. One for the tire wear and another for the weight redistribution. And we still have 1,462 points to spend. So I could buy another chassis one to be fair. And uh, the engine's still looking pretty good. We're still the third quickest engine on the grid. And in terms of the error, we are at the bottom of the table, but we could do with maybe an upgrade. So considering, you know, the next race is Baku, I might do two error upgrades. So we've got some performance for that race as well. So we're going to do this front downforce one and also one for the rear downforce as well. We're going to have two upgrades in for the next race. That should hopefully push us all the way up to like the fourth or fifth best team just behind Ferrari maybe in terms of aerodynamics and uh, that chassis upgrade should be in for the race after at Spain and hopefully we can add to that in the next episode but guys with these upgrades that are coming we should jump all the way up to pretty much McLaren's level and become the fourth best team on the grid so big things are coming guys hopefully you guys are looking forward to it if you are drop a like on the video and also get subscribed if you are new for daily Formula 1 content and also turn notifications to not miss any videos from me and finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you for watching i'll see you in my next one very soon but until then it's goodbye from me